Good morning class. Thank you for joining us uh, for this session. Today uh, we are going to discuss uh, uh, care for a mother during the second stage of labor and uh, we are majorly going to focus on the delivery pack. So when we talk about a sterile delivery pack, what do we actually mean? In front of you is Miss Roslyn Odiambo and I'm going to take you through this session uh, so that we may be able to understand when we are uh, taking care of our clients in labor world and we are carrying out a sterile procedure, what it actually means. So with me here on this trolley, uh, there's quite a bit that have uh, loaded on the top shelf and also the bottom shelf, but we want to focus on the sterile delivery pack today. Remember, uh, this concept is um, majorly um, in labor work. And uh, we are going to start by what you're seeing here. So this is the delivery pack, the sterile delivery pack. And when you look at it, it is well sealed. Normally, when we have uh, sterile equipment uh, packed, we get them from the CSSC. And for you to know that this pack is sterile, normally it has a strapping or um, a, 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 a strip that is actually having black light on it. And sometimes they even put the date to show that uh, it was prepared at this time and it can be used for such and such a time. So this is our sterile delivery pack. And this is basically what we are going to discuss in the next few minutes. So we have taken care of our mother in labor, in, labor, in labor ward and normally we wait until they get into the second stage of labor. That is when we can actually be ready to open our pack. But today we open it so that we are able to discuss what is inside the pack. So once you have scrapped, you cleaned your hands and you're ready to come and deliver your mother, then you have to open the pack, but with the help of an assistant. So the assistant will actually proceed, okay, and loosen the the strapping that is there okay and make sure that this pack is opened in a sterile manner what do i mean this pack when the assistant is helping us to open we make sure that she only he or she only touches the edges and not inside so she will be able to help us open the pack like that okay avoiding to touch inside right avoiding to touch inside as much as possible but today you are going to allow me to discuss the pack because we need to first of all understand what is inside. Then later on when we are doing the, uh, the actual delivery procedure and we go into the pack, then we will have it in mind that you are supposed to observe sterile aseptic techniques. So when you open the pack, the first thing you need, remember you are just from scrubbing. So your, your hands are clean and you've scrubbed all the way up to the elbow. So when you come, all right, you will get towels on top. Okay. So in this pack, the first thing you need in this pack are two towels. Uh, these towels are basically meant to help you to wipe your hands and your fingers because you cannot be able to gown and, you know, uh, dress up if you don't have um, this uh, to wipe your fingers with. Otherwise, you'll be working with uh, wet fingers. So the first towel will help you to wipe the first hand. Then the next towel will also help you to wipe the second hand. So once you've wiped using the two towels, then you proceed. The next thing you meet in that pack is a gown. There is a way this gown has been specially folded so that when you're ready to, um, to, uh, to have, it, have it on on your body, then it will automatically slide. So this gown is meant to be worn before we can actually be able to put on our gloves. And by the way, the sterile gloves are the ones that should be used for uh, carrying out uh, this procedure. So once you have uh, your gown on, then you will be ready now to put on your sterile gloves. So in essence, we are saying that once you gown, the assistant will be ready with the sterile uh, uh, pack of the gloves and drop it, all right? There is a special way we drop our, uh, our gloves, okay, in the sterile field. So just make sure that you don't contaminate the sterile field and make sure that the, uh, the gloves are dropped at an angle and within the reach of the... the midwife who is actually carrying out the procedure. Alright? So drop it inside the side field. And remember what I've just said, the gloves will be put on, alright, or will be drawn on after you have actually put on the the, the gown. Alright? So the gloves, gown and then gloves. So we have now put on our gown. So what else is inside this pack? So remember, you're actually uh, handling your client who is in labor. So what you meet next is what we call drapes, okay? 
drapes. We have drapes. Drapes are uh, uh, the, 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 the special uh, kind of uh, linen. Okay, they are not very big that we actually use to cover the mother so that they don't contaminate us and we also don't uh, need to observe the aseptic technique when handling them. Inside, okay, so we have drapes and normally the drapes are uh, five. In um, a very ideal setups, you can be lucky to get six of them, but five is adequate. Why am I saying that? The first drape will uh, cover the client on the thigh that is nearest to you. The other drape will cover the client on the abdomen. The other one will cover on the thigh that is farthest, and the last one will cover the uh, uh, will go on the bottom side of the client. The fifth drape is uh, the one that can be used now. You see, once the baby is born. Then the midwife who is handling the client will hand it over to the, to the assistant so that they can receive, they can use it to receive the newborn baby. Okay? So like I said, at least the minimum uh, number of drapes we need in this bath should be around five. But if you're lucky, you can uh, actually, in very ideal setup, you can get six of them. And then further to that, inside this, we have, uh, this is uh, a perennial pad. So perineal pads sometimes, uh, number one, they can be used to support the perineum and also uh, to basically make sure that uh, we, normally you'll get two of them. One will be used to support the perineum and the other one, the client will be able to put it on after the whole delivery process is complete. So in my part today, I was lucky to get one, but in ideal setups, you'll get two of them. Then further to that, we also have, uh, we have cotton wool. First of all, these are garlic pots, okay? One is enough, but I decided to put two in my pack today. So we have a gully pot. This gully pot, uh, once you're ready to swab or to clean the mother before you deliver the baby, then you will use this gully pot. Request your assistant to put some fluid, for some antiseptic fluid to clean, uh, probably hibiton. Then uh, inside it, you will dip your cotton, all right? You only need five cotton uh, pieces, all right, which is in the sterile pack. So this is the, these are the cotton that you will use to clean the mother. So you need, the procedure is that you arrange them in your dominant hand and then of course we know how uh, the, the process goes, you drop them one by one, then clean the perineum starting from the farthest labia, uh, nearest labia, uh, nearest outer, then farthest inner and uh, nearest inner, then finally you clean at the center of the perineum. So basically we need at least 10 pieces, all right, pieces of cotton. All right, even in my pack, I have 10 of them. Then you need a gully pot, which will be used to pour the fluid to clean the client. So that is our gully pot, and that is the function, together with the cotton. Then when you look at my pack also, I have gauzes. Gauzes are very essential, and especially once the baby has been born, okay, then you can use it to wipe. Normally, we wipe the face and any secretions that we are able to see on both on the mouth and also on the eyes. Uh, to enable the, uh, the, the the fetus not have difficulty in uh, in breathing. So when we are we, and sometimes you realize the baby is not able to uh, breathe because of the a lot of secretions in the mouth. So if we don't wipe, then we prevent. And uh, in if in other cases you realize that there are there's a lot of fluid that you may actually require a suction uh, tube to help remove those secretions. So you need to have at least 10 gauzes. Number one, I say, to help wipe the face of the baby once it is born. And number two, you can use it now to remove uh, any uh, clots. During the third stage of labor, we have to get out all the clots from uh, uh, from the vagina, okay? And uh, make sure that we, we don't have any. And also, using this uh, gauze, you see when you go in and you're removing all the blood, you're able to visualize all the structures around the vaginal wall if there are any tears and also you can visualize the cervix if it is intact. So the gauzes have to be um, quite a number and uh, at least 10 will work, will do all that you need during all the stages of labor until we are finished. So 10 would be adequate enough. Then of course um, we have uh, receivers, kidney dishes, they will help us to, 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 to collect any blood and also to receive the placenta and once we are able to do that then we will, you see now during the third and fourth stage, not that fourth stage we are able to examine our placenta so we can receive our placenta here and then any blood that has been lost remember at the end of the day we will be measuring the blood loss so don't forget to, to collect the blood using this all right and you can use it to assess uh, what you what is required during the fourth stage we have other equipment inside here uh, 
This one is called the episiotomy scissor. Remember, when we are delivering our women, uh, we have to assess the pelvic adequacy. So if the pelvis is not adequate, then it will be prudent for the midwife to make a decision quickly and make sure that they give a, um, an episiotomy. And this scissor is very ideal. It doesn't cause any undue harm to the client. Look at the mouth or the top of it. It's, it's very blunt, so it's not sharp to cause any harm to the client. But also remember, when you're doing an episiotomy, you have to administer lignocaine. You have to infiltrate lignocaine on um, the side. You can give it mediolaterally, laterally, or medially. Okay, so this is the episiotomy scissor. And then we have, uh, this is another scissor that can be, be used to, once you cut the cord, eh? once you cut the cord, you can use this one uh, to shorten the cord after the baby has been received on the other end by the assistant then we have two forceps okay we have two forceps two forceps one uh, once the baby has been delivered one will be used to clamp the cord uh, on both sides as you cut now remember you can use the forceps to clamp on both sides three to four centimeters away from the umbilical uh, junction and you can as well decide to use the cord clamp all right to to, to clamp as your handing over the baby but if that doesn't happen release uh, hand over the baby with um, these two cord clamps remember you have already cut then you're remaining with one uh, one one faucet on the baby's side so once this baby is handed over wherever the assistant will be um, taking care of this baby they will now come with the cord clamp and shorten that cord so these scissors uh, by the way can also double up as an episode um, as a, a, a uh, a scissor that can be used to cut, to cut the cord, but also to shorten. Alright, so that is what we normally have in our delivery pack. I hope this session can help you to remind yourself so that when you get uh, to the pack, you'll be able to understand what you need to do. Thank you.